Hello, sexy people. I just wanted to go through something a little bit quickly about the installation guide for Arch Linux Gen 2. And when it comes to just formatting your drives for Linux in general, I have a much easier way that I've been using for the past six years now, and I just don't see many people talking about it. The installation guide itself, I'll, I'll go through and I'll just show you that 60% of the guide can just be ignored pretty much. You have the pre-installation section, which is just downloading the ISO file and then writing it to a USB drive, booting into the live environment, just booting from the USB drive to begin with, setting up your keyboard layout. It uses US key map by default. Um, I guess you can set it to something else if you need, but it's just US keyboard map. You don't need to set the font. To verify the boot mode, whether it's UEFI or just BIOS, you can check this just by booting into the ISO itself. So if I go reset, this is restarting it. This here is the UEFI boot menu for Arch Linux and on the same ISO, this here is the BIOS boot mode. You can see it looks completely different and it even says UEFI and BIOS mode. If you're booting like this, then you just don't really need to check it. And then this part here connecting to the internet, if you have an ethernet connection at your house and you've plugged it into your computer, then you've connected to the internet. Assuming that your setup is similar to everyone else's with DHCP and your DNS servers as well. If you plug it in and then you don't actually see any connection, then you've got some bigger problems and I feel very sorry for you. You need to somehow obtain the correct drivers to run Ethernet on your computer. And there is the option of using IWCTL package to use wireless for laptops. Um, then you follow this guide to connect to wireless. But once you're connected, you don't have to worry about that. Ping archlinux.org. And what this is doing is also checking DNS resolution as well as network connection. And as you can see, it's completely connected. It's fine. So this can be ignored if you understand your setup. But when it comes to the partitioning, this takes up a good portion. The main thing that you want to know about it is you create the slash boot partition for UEFI. You can skip this if you don't have UEFI. You don't even need to create a slash boot. You just go to swap and the normal files. Yeah, slash boot, swap and normal files. Instead of doing F disk, the gross command, the old command, the command that I guess everybody uses, which is probably a little bit better. But in every case of installing Linux that I've done since I've learned about this command, I just use it. Use CF disk. Don't use F disk. What are you doing? CF disk slash dev slash SDA will list all of your partitions by default. You can go and modify these. And the thing is, it's intuitive. You don't need to be thinking too much about it. So if I go LSB OK to list my drives, if I go CF disk, I already opened it slash dev slash SDA. Just add a dash Z slash dev slash SDA. It sets it up by default. Use DOS for the old BIOS system, or you can use GPT and then use GPT for the normal one. You just default to GPT if you want. From here, make a new partition, one gigabyte for the boot, make a partition, four gigabytes for the swap, and then make a partition. So just go new, enter for the file system. Up here, go type swap, and then up here, go type EFI system. Go right and you're done. Quit, LSB OK. It'll show you the partitions. That's it. You don't have to worry too much about the F disk or the offsets for your drive, converting it from bytes to megabytes to gigabytes. You just do it like this. Just because it's so quick, I'll also show you the BIOS setup. CF disk dash Z to start from default, slash dev slash SDA. Go DOS, enter, four gigabytes for the swap primary. And then here, 36 gigabytes, just press enter primary. You go the type is Linux swap, and but also you have to go this one and give it a flag bootable. Press enter on right, type yes, press enter again, go quit, let's be okay, and then it's set up that way. I'll do it one more time for the GPT to show you the setup. One gigabyte EFI, four gigabyte swap, and the rest is the Linux file system. Set this to the type of swap and then set this one to the type of EFI. Press enter on right, type yes, press enter again, go quit. And then once you're finished making those partitions, just go mkfs.ext4 for the default Linux file system, slash devs, slash sda3. I'm gonna type Y because it already has a file system on there. Do the same for sda1 for the boot one. Oh, no, don't do that. My bad. <laughs> We've got to make fs.fat-f32 for sda1 for the boot. And then just go make swap, slash dev, slash sda2, and then swap on, slash dev, slash sda2, LSB OK. Now you can see that we have now the swap. You can even mount it, mount slash dev, slash sda3 to slash mnt, and then mount slash dev, slash sda1, slash mnt, slash boot. And let's go mkdir. And you can see it's already mounted, and that's it. So the main thing I wanted to go over with this is just use CF disk instead of F disk. And you can use this for all partitioning of your system. And it's just much simpler and intuitive than using F disk. And as you can see down here, after we've mounted the file systems, we've made it through most of the article for installing Arch Linux. Next part is just downloading Arch Linux from Packstrap, telling the system how to mount the drives, logging into your Arch install, and then setting the time, the location. I guess you can do the host name. You can skip that if you want. I don't think you can even do this. After that, the most difficult part is your bootloader. So I hope this quick little video has been helpful for you. I just wanted to say, don't use FDisk, use CFDisk. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for watching.